Hey guys, welcome to Mrs. G's Sewing Space. I'm glad you're able to join me today. Today we are talking about free motion embroidery and what it is. So quickly, I'll, I'll describe in the video what it is as we go along, but just so that you can see something about uh, what it is. These are two coasters that I made that, so this thread sketching right here and the thread sketching down here at the bottom, they go together because I did it as one big piece and then I did the entire piece like this and then I just cut it in quarters and then bound it. So all this is, is you using your sewing machine as an embroidery machine, but you're the person that moves the fabric underneath the needle. The regular embroidery machine will move the fabric for you with the hoop. You are the hoop and you move the fabric. And to let you guys know right off the bat, one of the tips to do this, you need to make sure your presser foot lever is down. So you're not gonna use your presser foot while you're doing this, it's gonna be taken off. But you still have to make sure you push your lever down to engage the needle and the tension and all that stuff that needs to be engaged. Because if you don't, so this is a practice run that I was doing earlier. I drew it out and then I was just fooling around with it, trying to make sure my tension was right and everything else. But on the back side here, do you see those threads right there? Those threads they're pulling. They're not tight. They're not like this right here, but they're they're pulling right here. That is what happens when you do not put your presser foot down. When you do not put your presser foot down, it looks like a mess on the back. And that's not what you want. When you're thread sketching, you want the front and the back to look the same. And so I show you this to let you know that I did an entire round on this practice. So it looks great here on the front, or as good as I could get it. it looks great here, but it doesn't look so great here because of all those loose threads there. And that's not what you want when you, when you fabric sketch or when you do free motion embroidery. But I'll continue explaining all that and we will get on to the video. Okay, what you're seeing here are the feed dogs. The feed dogs are those little grippy shiny bits there in the gray circle that move your fabric forward from, from the forward to the back. So as you're sewing and your fabric is moving towards the back, that's what's doing it. And so you can see they come above the surface of your throat plate to grip the fabric and to push it to the back. In my sewing machine, there is a button here on the back. You just gotta switch the button to the other side. It's kinda hard to do for this machine and it drops the feed dogs, meaning the feed dogs are no longer going to grip your fabric. You can still see them move when, when I hit the pedal. You can still see them move. They've just fallen below the throat plate, so they're no longer there to grip any of the fabric. And that allows you the mobility to move your fabric around and you're the one who is now the feed dogs. So you have to grip the fabric and you have to move it all around at your pace. So here I am trying to thread my needle because I'm going to start, this is the practice in the very first. Um, as you can see I drew my design out, just a random doodle, I was just trying to figure out something cool to do. And I brought my top thread down to pick up my bobbin thread, so both the top and the bottom thread are laying on top of the fabric. And this is me using my pedal to make the needle go up and down but I'm the one that's moving the fabric. So my, my feed dogs are down, so they're not doing anything. They're just making noise underneath, but they're not gripping the fabric. So that's why I have my hands there moving the fabric. Now I had some quilting mitts, which I had made some time ago, and all they are is a pair of old winter mittens that I had taken puffy paint and drawn on the palms. So that's what the white that white glue like looking stuff on the palm and it gives me a grip on the fabric so it makes it a little easier to move the fabric around on my own but you have to be careful watch where you put your hands at because you don't want to get stabbed with the needle now that your presser foot's gone it's kind of like one of your guards is gone so you don't want to, to stab yourself or to sew your finger like I did So 
So every time you stop and start, you always want to make sure that you pull up both the threads, the top and the bobbin thread, before you start. And here I go, I'm trying to, I don't know why it got so dark over there on the right hand side, but now you can see. You want to hold the fabric taut, so it needs to be tight. And I was having some frustration here because I would do fine for a while and then my thread would shred and I'm, I think it was my thread. It would end up shredding and I'm not running over my thumb. Woo, that looked like I got close though, but I don't recall that. But it would, it would shred and I would have to stop and I'd have to re-thread and I did this a couple of times and it just got really frustrating. When you thread sketch, you don't necessarily do it once, but you kind of do it multiple times. And if you get plenty of practice in, you can do words, you can do pictures, you can do applique. I might do something like that later on. Maybe I'll go, I'll do an expanded version of uh, free motion embroidery. I used to do t-shirts for, for little boys in particular. I would thread sketch on the t-shirts and sell them on Etsy before Etsy went to pop. And, and it, was, it was fun. I had a good time doing it. But I had a different machine when I was doing it as well, so my prior sewing machine didn't give me near as many problems doing this free motion embroidery as this one did. So eventually I got frustrated because I really needed the fabric to be taut and me using my hands, it just wasn't, it wasn't, I don't know, it just wasn't enough. I wasn't holding it down stiff enough, I guess, and moving it the way I needed to move it. So you can see how many times I, I snipped and pulled and, and I'm re-threading right now with a different thread to see if I could get it to behave any better. And thankfully this thread did behave better than my last one, but they were both the same brand, so I'm not sure what happened there. Okay, so at this point I decided to try something different. Now I know that you could do this with an embroidery hoop and my biggest embroidery hoop at this time was an 8 inch wide embroidery hoop so I wanted to try it out. So I took all the big safety pins out, the quilting pins that held everything together because I don't have to worry about that anymore. I stitched the middle of the flower so everything was going to stay together. But because my embroidery hoop wasn't as big as I wanted it to be, I would have to hoop part of the design before I could use it because it just wasn't big enough. And so I finally hooped it as tight as you can get it and this is why you need to use an embroidery hoop. You need to get it as tight as you can get it because you need to be able to keep that fabric taut. Well I ended up changing, I ran to the store, which you don't see, but I ended up running to the store and getting a 10 inch hoop, which ended up fitting just fine. And as you can see here, that's what I'm using here. I'm using a bigger hoop, it holds my entire design and it holds the fabric taut. It's not as sturdy as I wanted. This particular embroidery hoop was all that Joann's, the Joann's and Hobby Lobby, because I got two different ones. Oh, my original hoop was seven inches. I got an eight inch hoop and then I got a 10 inch hoop. So this is the one I'm working on now is the 10 inches right here. And it was big enough to hold my design. But it's a flimsy plastic. It's not a very stiff, hard plastic, which makes it kind of a pain in the butt to, to hoop. Once again, I had problems with thread breaking, but I had less problems this time around with my thread breaking than I did earlier. And I also think I realized at this point, yep, I had did the whole thing with my presser foot up instead of down, which gave me that spider webbing kind of look on the back, which is, you know, kind of interesting if that's what you're going for, but that's not what I wanted. And, and so I'm like, I can't believe I did that. I did the whole thing with, with my presser foot up. So now, just a reminder, when you do this, unless that's the look you're going for, put your press foot down. 
bring up your thread, put your presser foot down, and you can keep going. Okay, so my original design was done, and so now I'm just fooling around here. And you can see I'm moving pretty slowly. I had moved my machine from the fastest speed to kind of like a medium fast speed. I didn't want it as fast as it could be because if I don't move my hoop fast enough, the stitches are going to be too small. So I have to match my thread. Sorry, not my thread. I have to match the speed of my moving the hoop with the speed of the machine so that I would get even stitches but still you know where it would look decent and anytime I needed to stop to reposition my hoop I stopped and I repositioned my hoop but I always had my needle down in the fabric so that I could use it as a pivot after a while and once you get the hang of it once you know your machine then the problems kind of disappear or they kind of disappeared for me so I didn't have near as many problems this time around as I did when I was beginning when I when my my thread was wrong, trying to do it without the embroidery hoop was a pain in the butt, my thread kept breaking, I think my needle size may, may have done something too, so I think I changed my needle at one point in here. I moved to a 80, uh, a thinner needle, because I had a medium needle in here, but I went to a thinner needle. Because I had, I had a 9014 in there originally, and it was giving me problems, so I moved to an 8011. This is where I keep all my needles at. And then once I got my thread right, once I got my needle right, and once I had everything hooped up correctly and it, the fabric was tight, it got a lot easier to, to embroider. So here I am just doing squiggles. These are the kind of squiggles you would do on a, on a quilt. That sometimes you find on on quilts that that just have that homemade squiggly look to them. I kind of like that squiggly look, but I'm not a quilter. I do small quilts like my pot holders in my next video, which is exactly like quilting, just in a really small version. Okay, and so there you go. And then when you're done, you just take a couple of stitches at the end of wherever the end of your sketch and design is. Just do a couple of back stitches, snip your threads, pull everything out, and you're done. So you could do this on tote bags, t-shirts, pot holders, you know, anything that you can quilt, you can do this on. So I've seen a lot of um, wallets, little wrist bags. I probably could have done this for my KISS class purses. Um, this was just a practice to make sure that I could still do it. But my next one was the pot holders. But you'll see those in the next video. Not too bad. Not too bad for a practice, I just need to get a better design. So what did you guys think about free motion embroidery? It's a little, there's a curve to it, learning how to do it and making sure that you don't stab yourself in the process like I did. I managed to stab myself through the front of my fingertip to the back. My needle on my sewing machine went straight through. And that's not something I recommend to anybody. Don't try it if you can avoid it. And um, I hope you guys were able to learn a lot. And I'll see you in my next video.